Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today I'm going to be doing an art brush challenge. Okay, so today I wanted to challenge myself to use a brush that I am not familiar with. In fact, one that I kind of despise. In the past few months, I had seen a lot of artists paint with a dagger brush and I had never owned a dagger brush before. If I'm being honest, I had only really ever painted with a round brush. So I definitely wanted to give it a try. And the only dagger brush I could find at the time were these Princeton Neptune dagger brushes. Now they looked a little different on the website. Um, obviously it's very fluffy, <laughs> soft hair and um, didn't look exactly like some of the dagger brushes I had seen, but I bought them and I wanted to give them a try because as some of you may know, I was developing some new watercolor subscription boxes with Craftimo, which are out now, which are currently sold out, but well, hopefully we can restock at some point. Um, and one of the brushes that I wanted to add in these boxes was a dagger brush. So I needed to play around with a dagger brush to kind of get a feel for what it actually is. So I bought these two brushes and I tried them out and I hated them, like hated them super frustrating brushes. I just didn't understand what their purpose was. Um, so I tried them and then I, I put them to the side and I haven't touched them again because I find them very, very frustrating. But I wanted to challenge myself today to paint with brushes that I'm not familiar with and these are it. So let's, let's give these a go again and I'm going to point out things I really don't like about them but we're going to try our best and see if I can actually paint something with them that I will end up liking so here goes nothing let's get into it okay so today I am going to be doing this challenge in my etcher lab cold press watercolor sketchbook I have my Winsor Newton professional watercolors and I have my Princeton Neptune dagger brushes in these two sizes Okay, I have one that's slightly larger and slightly smaller. Um, and I do know of the Princeton Neptune brushes. I have a set of them. So I already know that they are very soft brushes. They kind of emulate that squirrel hair feel. So they're very soft. They hold a lot of water. So there was no surprise in that. But what I was surprised with these dagger brushes compared to the other Neptune ones I have is the length of the bristles. So this is what really threw me off. And you'll see as I continue to play with them, um, having longer bristles is way harder to control, especially in this shape. Uh, so when I did order them and I saw that they were Neptune brushes, I thought, you know, I knew they were going to be soft, but I thought maybe they would have been a bit shorter. I didn't anticipate them being this long and difficult to work with. So I was surprised, but I have used these before and I do like them. Um, but if you guys do know me, I do like a stiffer, snappier brush. All of my Craftimo ones are very stiff, snappy brushes, and especially for beginners, it is so much easier to control a stiffer brush. So um, this, using these ones, feels quite out of control. So you'll see that when I start painting with it. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna play with this again because the first time I did, I was getting super frustrated and I wanna see if I can actually paint something with it. So let's begin. I am going to wet up this brush. And it's just super weird to use. Like, it's like painting with like a tip of your hair. It's really odd. It's super soft, very flexible. Um, and like, if you bend it, like it doesn't really snap back, right? It just kind of bends. It's really odd. So I'm just going to try. And you know, guys know I love painting flowers. So I'm going to paint some flowers and see what I can do with it. One other thing I noticed about using this brush is that it's really hard to pick up paint because there's not enough stiffness to really get in there. And it's just really long and kind of weird. And it holds so much brush, I just keep flicking the water everywhere. So, and like even when I take it out of the paint, it's not really holding its shape all that much. So I'm just gonna try holding it kind of like how I would do a dagger brush now. I'm trying to move that that backside around and it just feels very, very hard to control. Like I can barely get it all down and get the shape that I'm trying to achieve. It's really, I don't know. It's just, it feels so odd and it it's frustrating, right? So I'm just gonna, I mean, that's not bad, 
but it doesn't feel good in my hands. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'll let me grab some green. Yeah, it's so hard to pick up paint with this just because it moves around. Like, look, it just moves around so much. Oh my gosh. And then it holds so much water you forget. I, I'm not used to having to do this every time. Like, I just dropped a whole bunch of water there. Like, it's so hard to kind of get <laughs> the shape that I want. Oops. It's weird. I mean, you can get some really nice little lines with it. That's kind of cool. I got to mop this up because that is way too wet. This just holds so much water and it's just so flexible. It's odd. I'm just going to try and soak that up a bit. Okay, that's not too bad. I can see this being really good for like loose paintings, I guess. Oh, I don't even know how to maneuver it. It just feels wrong. <laughs> it just feels wrong. It is so soft and it just bends when you don't want it to bend. Like I'm trying to like really put some pressure down and I just can't get that pressure that I'm looking for. It's really frustrating. This doesn't look bad at all. I also find because um, I'm using cold press paper, it's more textured. It's like almost catching. It's like not gliding smoothly across because I can't put that pressure down. Um, so it's really hard to kind of get this, um, this line that I'm kind of going for. And I like to work fast, right? Like I mean, it's kind of cool. You can get some textures with it, but it's not actually, it feels like the bristles aren't actually touching the whole paper. Like I'm doing a stroke and it's like, look at that. I just don't, I don't get it. And then like you want to move it the other way and it just bends that way. I don't get it. It's really frustrating. Okay. It's like I have to take the tip and draw it. I don't understand. So like my, my initial thoughts when I first tried this is like, why would anybody want a brush this soft with it this long? I'm not going to lie. I honestly thought like I was getting so frustrated. I just wanted to take scissors and just cut it off and maybe use it as like a stippling brush. <laughs> not going to. Um, even though I did buy it, I could do whatever I wanted with it. I'm like determined to keep trying here. I mean, okay. Plus is because it doesn't like, I feel like the whole all the bristles don't necessarily touch down on the paper. You can have some pretty cool textures with it. So for loose florals and stuff, this this can be pretty cool, I guess. But I don't know. I just, it's really frustrating. Like, let me just switch to my craft mode dagger that we have developed. Now, this is a very large dagger. This is a, this is a dagger that I'm more familiar with or used to. Like... See that? Like it's the rounded edge that you want, right? I just love, and even if you see with my my Craftimo brushes, my original set, the bristles are shorter because it's easier for control, right? And that's like so true compared to this. Like just these are so long and it, the longer they are, the harder they are to control. So just playing with my dagger that we developed, just getting paint on your brush is like, oh, you can see, look at that. Like this is a huge one but like all the bristles touch. You can control the pressure. I don't know. So I'm going to play with this and you know what? I kind of, I don't want to play around in my sketchbook anymore. I don't want to, I hate saying waste paper, but I don't want to just play in here. Um, I'm going to grab my dollar store paper. The cover fell off, but I used this in my dollar store supplies video. And I'm going to play around on this for a bit and see if I can just figure out some strokes that I like that work. Another thing is mixing colors together. I find it so hard to kind of, it's just, it doesn't come as easily with this brush. So let's, let's just try the way I teach people to play with new supplies. It's, let's see what marks we can make with this brush. Okay, so I'm on my dollar store paper. Actually, it almost feels easier to paint on this paper. This is really cheap. It's not even like cellulose paper. It's just, it almost feels like plastic. But because it's not cotton paper, it kind of glides across a lot smoother. That's interesting. So I can do like big washes like that. I think also I need to work slower maybe. 
I'm so used to doing my florals really, really fast and mixing colors really fast. Maybe this brush is like <laughs> forcing me to take some time to slow down. Okay, so you got that thin, you got that thick. Let's press down like this a bit. So you can't do that. It's so weird. You know the light pressure to heavy pressure? Because when you press down, it just keeps it bent that way. It doesn't really work. That's so odd. Don't love that. Okay, that's not going to work. What about that stroke that I did before? That's kind of cool. I mean, I feel like it can make some pretty cool leaves, maybe. Like, that's a cool shape. And because it's so long, it's kind of nice to turn. Interesting. So I'm learning that I think I need to go a little slower, take some time, which is something I don't typically do. I like to paint really fast. If I just press. Nope. <laughs> This is such a weird brush. I mean, it, you can get some pretty cool leaf shapes. Like, that almost feels like it's therapy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just like a nice glide. But also, this paper, like I said, is very smooth. Like, there's a grain to it, but it's... it's. I can't explain what this feels like. It doesn't even feel like cellulose paper. It feels like plastic. It's weird. Um, but because it's so... I'm going to say slippery. It's kind of nice to kind of glide across on with this brush. While I felt like on my cotton paper, it was just kind of catching on the texture. And create some little rectangles. Ooh, that's cool. That works. Let's mix it with a little bit of pink in here. You can get some really great points with this, which is really cool. I think with anything, you just need to maybe just take time and slow down and practice a bit. And when something doesn't feel right in your hand, like this is a brand new brush to me, right? Like it's nothing that I've played with for hours and hours and hours like I have with my round brushes. It's not going to feel as familiar. So I have to remember that. And I think for me, it's just learning how to be okay with <laughs> Not knowing how to do something right away. Um, like, this does not feel right. This That's not working. So I know that stroke's not going to work. Um, so I just kind of have to be okay with, with how this works. And I don't know. Let's try that. That kind of stroke that I do with my other dagger brush to get, like, a cool petal shape works. That's interesting. It's actually a lot easier on this paper just because it glides. Okay, you know what I say? I say we give it a go and try and paint some flowers on this paper. We're going to stick with this paper because I just want to keep playing around. And we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, so this is where things started to take a turn for the better. I kind of learned a bit more about this brush and how to use it. I needed to go slower. So here, see, I, I just slowed it down to my normal speed for you. And this is how slow I should be going, which is not as slow as I usually go when I'm painting my florals. So learning something about this brush is that I need to go slower and take my time because it is such a soft brush. You need to lengthen out those strokes with the time so each of the bristles touches the paper. Also, I realized that this paper, even though it is only dollar store paper, it was a lot easier to work on because it was smoother and it kind of glided across the paper a lot better and it allowed that water and those bristles to really touch down and create the shapes that I wanted to. The next thing that I realized that I actually really love about this brush is that you can make some really beautiful leaf strokes because the bristles are so soft and long, you can make these beautiful winding leaves like almost effortlessly. So you can do the really, really nice 
um, thin strokes for the stems and then these long winding leaves which I absolutely loved to create for this. I found it so soothing and therapeutic. And then I decided to kind of change it up a little and then do some outlines of leaves which I don't usually do. Um, and it was a lot of fun kind of just drawing with the tip of the brush. The way the brush moves, like I said, because it is so soft and flexible, it just, it kind of dances in a certain way that you have to get used to, but is a lot of fun to use. So that paired with like the tips to make these like little lines was actually a lot of fun. And I learned so much from doing this painting and playing around today. And yeah, it was excellent. Okay, so did that go as I expected? No, it went better than I expected. And are these the most frustrating brushes to use in the world? Also no. Okay, so the title of this video may have been a little bit clickbaity, but you know what? I kind of wanted to teach you guys a lesson. Um, that's not how I actually meant for this video to go, but I learned something and that is before you get super frustrated with a new supply, give yourself a little bit of time to play with it and experiment because you actually might be pleasantly surprised. Now, do I absolutely love these brushes and have this like all of a sudden revelation that these are the best things in the world? No, they're not necessarily my style, um, but I definitely can now see a use for them that I didn't before. These are pretty good for some loose florals that maybe I wanna try to experiment with more. They're not really for my everyday use of things that I really like to use, but now I have a better feeling about them because I have figured out how I can use them to benefit me in my work. So that's kind of the moral of this story in this video. That is the lesson that we are learning today. And I hope you guys will also take this challenge on. So if you have a supply at home, maybe brushes or paper or paint or a pen or markers that have just been frustrating you, I urge you to challenge yourself to pick up that supply Try and use it in as many different ways as you possibly can and see what you can do with it. Maybe think outside the box and have a use for it that you didn't actually think it was used for. And then come back to the comments, let me know how that goes, and then we can chat about it. Again, if you don't love a supply, you can always just say, you know what, that wasn't for me. Maybe it's not for you, but at least you may feel better that you've given it your best effort the next two or three times instead of just giving up and saying, that thing is garbage because I know these brushes are not garbage. I know they are not frustrating. I just needed to learn how to manipulate them to do what I wanted them to do or to do something new that maybe I wasn't realizing that they were capable of doing. So yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.